It's St Valentine's Day at Cheatham School of Music. Just getting to the age where, it, like, where you could learn to do some like musical instrument, and there they just sort of said who would like to learn. We've got two trumpets and two violins, so I didn't want to play the violin. I thought it was for girls, so I uh, put my hand up for the trumpet, and like loads of people put it up. I don't know why she picked me the teacher, but um, thank you, Mrs. Leeming, for doing that all those years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a professional musician uh, who plays the trumpet, and. Um, I'd like to play in orchestras. I'd, I'd love to play in a symphony orchestra. That'd be great as a career. When did I first conduct? I first was conducting a wall. Someone was at a music hall, someone was playing a record of Chike Violin Concerto. And I was conducting this, this wall and, and going mad in front of this wall. And the conductor was standing behind. And I didn't know this, and I continued for about five minutes. And he tapped me on the shoulder, and I was awfully embarrassed. And he said, well, I'll get you on there. On the, on the podium. Jeremy Carnell is in his third and final year at Cheatham's. I think you have to be very selfish to get anywhere. You have to be your own man, doing your own thing. You have to have your own ideas. And I think it is lonely. I don't mind that. I quite, I quite like being lonely, as it were. I, I, I've always known that, so I think I've always been like that. I don't really get connected to people too much. But I think if you have such a love for what you're doing, you're never lonely. My friend used to have a tortoise in the grass, and I used to watch it, and it used to be, be like this. Yeah. Really? So your strokes, your strokes <laughs> must be, your strokes must be like that. Yeah. Da 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 da. Quite relaxed, slow tortoise. Yeah. D don't worry about techniques. Yeah. It's just got to have line, line to it. Yeah. Simple tortoise. Right. Let's try it. Great. I Can came to Chet's when I was 16 as a cellist, but I always had an interest in conducting. The From Norwich, my father was a dental technician, but he died when I was nine. So it's basically just my mother and I. Keep the separation. All eyes on Gerald, not on me. He follows me. The government pays nearly all my fees. I think my mum pays very little. It's this mysterious art that no one quite really knows where it's coming from. No one really understands it. I think it's a gift, but not many of the teachers understand it, what it is. I don't yet. I'm still trying to find answers. I mean, there's endless books about it, but when it comes down to it, it's all a gift from God. It's all good, Greg. Good.
Good, good. in the heart of Manchester is the largest specialist music school in the country with 280 students. They combine their music studies with normal school life. Stuff. It's not. It's not. It's not. Okay? That's it. Just you go. No, all of us. Yeah. Because you've got to give a chance for the tuba to speak, haven't you? Yeah? But if you play at that speed, it'll sound really clear and it'll sound terribly fast. Illusion. A musical illusion, really. No. Second sound. Third. Because the music world is so tough, even these nine-year-olds are learning the importance of professionalism. But the leavers know that despite all this training, they won't all make it to the top in the outside world. Final year pressures are all too briefly left behind making their kind of music. Nick Coombs has been at Cheatham's for five years and is leaving for music college this summer. Um, I had a rough patch for a couple of years. Um, that was, that's been. Um, it kind of ended that patch around last October, just before my college auditions. You know, I mean, it, it wasn't throughout that whole two-year period, but um, I just uh, lost self-confidence a bit. You know, and it's it's hard being somewhere like this because, I mean, there's a lot expected of you, obviously, because everyone's musicians. And if, uh, if, you, if you lose a bit of confidence or something like that, it can be quite difficult. And um, anyway, I think I did some hard work. Um, I had some help from a trumpet teacher and managed to kind of overcome that. So that's the only time. I didn't, I'd never had any doubts as to what I wanted to be. It was just a matter of uh, just believing in myself a bit, I think. Pretty much there. Mm. I didn't entirely have that kind of thing. Okay. You know, so feeling. I wasn't absolutely on top of it all the way. No. But then, you know, how many times you were absolutely on top of it? Never. <laughs> how many times? How many times do you think I'm absolutely on top of it? No, never. no one ever is. Confidence in themselves. That's 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 the only thing. A teacher can, uh, not the only thing, the thing that I try to give them, confidence within themselves to go ahead and experiment, not, not to be scared of making mistakes, 
to go with what they feel because basically they all their their instincts are good they're good lads they know where they they know where they want to go they know what it they know what they want to sound like they've both improved beyond my expectations you know they're brilliant they're they're good lads Nick's best friend Ian Pratt came to Cheetham's in the fourth form he's also leaving in the summer I play this for a bit I know but that's the thing yeah you know yeah. you'll have a it's to be able to turn on and to be able to turn off when it need to be on you need to be not sort of on we're not talking dimmer switch stuff here <laughs> full on full off yeah. yeah and that's that's the hard thing to know reasonable expectation you didn't feel good on saturday so did you try uh how to put this in the first half did you try to do exactly the same as you would do if you felt really good yeah and what happened? It didn't really come off. Okay. When you perform, I'm not saying, you know, oh, I don't feel good, I'm not going to give my best. Yeah. But that, you know, within that there's an envelope of what's acceptable and what isn't acceptable. You know, the ultimate is up here. Mm. The rest of it's here, right? The boys are at at a at a tricky time. They're full of confidence and yet you poke them and maybe they're not. Uh, John, John's done a lot for me. Because <coughs> uh, when, I, I um, when I went to him, I, I kind of lost my confidence a little bit to do with my, my technical ability. And I think I'd uh, you know, I just lost my drive a little bit, really. And he, he just sorted my technique out because, you know, music and what I was hearing in my head was OK and everything, but it's just I needed to... Uh, just have a bit more drive on the technical side. And he, was, he just explained things very clearly to me, and that really helped me, you know, because he, he just said the same things over and over again, and he, and he motivated me. They're, they're both highly motivated. They work, they work, work, work. They enjoy it, they're happy. Therefore, they'll do well wherever they go. I'm going to Berkeley College of Music in Boston next year. I got one of the eight thousand dollars scholarships. It's still going to work out pretty expensive to go over there, so like I'm still looking to raise money really. You know stuff he says out. We've wrote off to all these organisations and stuff like that, and then in the end, it's like people who live down the street, like small businessmen, people my dad knows and that. You know they end up giving you the money, which is great. You know, communities rallied around them, but we still need a fair bit. Don't look very neat, does it? Are we I'd love to have the money and go abroad um, to some some place like Spain where I know they, they they don't know the classical repertoire like we do. And I'd love to set up an orchestra there and 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 play and have watch people's faces when they're hearing Sibelius too for the first time. I'd like to do that. Um I'll just persistently work and hopefully I'll make a name for myself and hopefully the paths will open for me. If they don't, I'm destined to do something else. And I'd quite like to go to um, back to Norfolk and work on the boards. I'd do something in agriculture or something with the land. Curiously, conducting is not something that specialist music schools have been willing to teach. And Cheatham's is no exception, as Jeremy has found out. I had problems. I wasn't allowed to get the music out from the school library. Um, the librarian said, you have to have a member of staff. I asked several members of staff, but they weren't prepared to get it out for me. So I went to the central library and got the parts. But on my arrival back at school, I distinctly remember being, being told that you're not to do this and things, you're not supposed to be doing this. But I, I carried on. <laughs> I carried on and um, 
it was all undercover, secret, one Friday afternoon, and we did it like this. And it involved me asking every single player in the orchestra, are you coming? Are you all right? Here are the parts. And this took ages, a lot, because you have to see everybody at the break. I, I need to see you then. Uh, Some point, where, where are you free today? No, I've got to go off got... very shortly. Right. Mr. Delphine helps me when he can, and Mr. Hopkins helps me when I can. But I feel a bit brushed aside by a lot of members of staff as a conductor. Saturday night is the big night out for the sixth formers, when they can escape into the city. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I want the people to get the feel for it, yeah, the elasticity of it. And tomorrow, um, is carnival at 7 o'clock? Yeah, how long? that'll be good. So I might be going out. Oh, later, about an hour. But, uh, I just want people to get a feel for it and go to the end and see where the difficult bits are. There's a lot that's expected of you as um, far as being professional with your music, how, how you present yourself when you're playing a symphony orchestra concert, how you act towards uh, your practice. So they've got a lot of trust in you as far as that's concerned. We don't have set practice hours. And so the trust us to get down do our work, but um, at the same time, they don't um, trust us to take care of ourselves out in Manchester so much, I don't think. They uh, like to keep an eye on us all the time. Or not all the time, but um, there are times when I feel a bit policed, I think. They're 18 years old and they want to go and have a bit of fun, so they do. <laughs> Some of them really do. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you in a minute. Hi, Mrs. H. Hi, you flower. Hello. All right. Yeah. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? All right. Hi. Hi. Nice night? Yeah. Good. Yes, I am. Yeah. 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 We all moan on about chess, but I mean, it has been good. I mean, the the one thing I always the first thing that is sorted out for me is my playing my trumpet playing, you know with John that has just been like, you know, invaluable really it was just great. Um, I've also just been in Manchester I've met, I've got involved in quite a few like out of out of Chet's, you know bands and that and I've played in clubs and that's been as good as anything really because I've got to play with some professionals good musicians you know and I've just basically got to know people better. Cause I've, been in like a, a bigger musical society. Jeremy's persistence has paid off. He's been given an orchestra for an hour to rehearse Elgar's Sospiri. He's spent three weeks working on it. I learn the work structurally first. I see where the climaxes are, emotional content, key relations. 
and then I listen to a few recordings and I take it to the piano and then I'll often leave it for four weeks absorbing the work and then it'll, it'll come out completely different from anything I've listened to. Right, let me tell you something about it. It's written um, 1914 after Falstaff, the big symphonic poem which didn't go too well and it's written just before the war and it has a lot of echoes of the last page of the cello concerto. It's this the same feeling. So what we must do is, it's all right, it's very difficult beating wise because of this, it's just so elastic, ridiculously. Um, we must, first of all, you need to sing much more violins. And all our bow changes, we must really concentrate on our bow changes, hitting to the flat of the hair, cello, especially on that melody. Like, open your arm out and you, all the bow changes must be like glue. It's just butter, a lot of it's butter. You have to grade your bow changes, yeah. Especially in the opening. Which must be very subdued. Yeah. Very deep piece. Doesn't, we don't need to, to talk about it, we can all feel it. Um. I think you need to know a lot about the composer as a human being and you're there to inspire the players and direct them and argue with them and agree with them. I think that the role of the conductor is to, is to help the orchestra. Chromaticism, yeah, very important. Figure two. Ah. You sense the sword here, yes? Yes? So open out much more, much brighter sound. Mezzo forte, really. It's quite a large mezzo forte, yeah? Open out much more. Yeah, yeah, it's more intense then, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? Figure two. That's all right now. Funny notes. I think in a few years, maybe 10 or 15, uh, I'll be, be ready to do something. I need training there. I think I'll be, be ready to, to conduct, whether it be amateur or professional. I've got no idea. But there's something I want to do. And I always want to play the cello as well. That's my ambition, is to, to play the cello in orchestras and also conduct. And, and which way the path leads is not up to me. My destiny is, is there, and I've just got to follow it and carry on, I think.